Hello guys, I'm Vidan here. Uh, Gwent Close Beta is coming to an end, and here I am, bringing you the best game that I've ever played in the Gwent Close Beta period, amongst 700 plus ranked games that I've ever played. I am fortunate enough to play and kind of mastered two of the strongest fashions in a Gwent Close Beta. One is the Monsters, the other one is the Squirtle, right? So I'm really experienced in this matchup. In this particular game, me and my opponent's MMR are not super high. We are at about 4.5, 4.6k, but we did put up a really good fight. Okay, so let's just go straight into it. Okay, so first of all, obviously to blacklist the first light. Okay. And then uh, I'm all, I'm using the list that contains Manicoy rather than the Illustrate at this point. So always kick the Manicoy or the Illustrate, and then last uh, Mulligan is always the Roach, right? So opponent starts with playing uh, Yennefer Kong. Okay, I want to pause the video a little bit and I talk about the Yennefer Kong. Usually in the uh, ladder setting, right? The monster player plays three goals. Those are non-negotiable. They are the caretaker, the avalanche, the K ran, right? And then the fourth one depends on how strong you want to attack against uh, specific fashions, right? If you play uh, Yennefer, Yennefer Kong, you are attacking really heavily against the Squirtle players, right? If you play Igni, it's more standard, okay? The reason that Yennefkan is really good against the Squirtle deck is that the Squirtle can usually only put up the units that has like 4 strengths, 3 strengths, 5 strengths, right? It's really easy for the Yennefkan to hit multiple targets uh, on the board and uh, gain a lot of value, okay? And uh, for a lot of uh, inexperienced players, Yennefkan can be a pretty strong card, a frustrating card to play against. However, uh, it's not really that hard, okay? There are two strategies that we should implement when playing against the NFK, okay? One is to put up a lot of tempo very fast on the board and then pass, okay? We call that tempo pass. If I'm the monster player and I'm playing against the Wounding Axeman Skellige deck, okay? He plays NFK. okay? I can just play my clones, right? I put 20 strengths on the board and then just pass immediately. Okay, the Skellige player needs to play one or two more cards in order to catch up. Okay, which he didn't cash in his uh, Yennefer Khan value. Okay, that is a really good play. The other strategy is to always put the unit that has the weakest strength on the board first. And then you gradually increase the strength of your unit so that it decreases the chance of Yennefer Khan of uh, hitting multiple units. Okay, you will see in this game that I implement this strategy really well. Okay, so I put my uh, Isengun on the board. He plays his clones, which are all pretty standard, right? Isengun also pulls out the Roach, right? So the Yennefer can only hit the uh, three strands Roach once, right? I played the uh, Elven Mercenary because my Elven Mercenary can only pull out either the Rally or the Manicor, right? I pull out the Manicor, which is pretty lucky. Okay, at this point, I should keep playing the weakest units that I that I can, right? Which is gonna be the Elven Mercenary, the right? Let's enjoy the and it looks like I pull out the Rally, and then another Elven Mercenary. Another rally, which is really lucky, right? If you look at the cards that I have uh, in, in my deck at that point, I I had so many bronze in the deck, right? Although I only had uh, first light as spells in the deck anymore, I could very much like pull out the archers, the dragoons, or even the blue mountain commando. But I just kept pulling out elven mercenary and then into the rally, right? That's pretty lucky for me, but it's nothing that I didn't expect it. Okay, so I have a 
decent lead on the board now. Okay, so he he did have some. Uh, he did I think he's dark three times, right? Because he's Rain Warrior ate a crone and then summon a small spider and three more spiders uh, came out from his deck, which is a pretty good play for him. And then now I need to pay attention to potential potentially scorch a double units, right? Because his Rain Warrior is gonna eat the two strands crone and then the two strands crone is gonna be 14 strands. And if I use my leader ability to pull out the Yenven, my Yenven is gonna be 14 strands as well. Right, just keep that in mind. Okay, and in terms of my side of the board, uh, I have you can hit multiple units now. Uh, however, I think the best play is to use Thunder to kill his uh, Behemoth because I'm three strands behind. Right, by killing the Behemoth, I will be three strands ahead, and then his Yennefer Calm is gonna hit three units, so I will be. Uh, the strengths will be even. However, by casting one spell, I will summon a commando, three strength commando. So after summoning his uh, behemoth, I will be uh, three strengths ahead, I think. But I don't have to like prevent him from hitting my multiple units all the time, as long as I see a good play. For example, killing his uh, behemoth, which is a, a really important target to get rid of as soon as possible. It's okay to just let the Yennefer Khan to hit multiple targets from time to time, okay? And right now I shall play... Hmm, I think it's okay to play the King of Baggers, yes. If I play the King of Baggers, it's gonna 100% pull out the Blue Mountain Commandos. My Blue Mountain Commando is gonna be 4 strands and I can refresh the 5 strands uh, uh, Dragoon, which gives me 2 turns to play other things rather than pay too much attention to the to the strengths, right? His Yennefer Khan is gonna uh, damage two units at a time, but it's okay, right? I think at this point, uh, there's a variation that I can do right here, right? I can either put a Yennefer Khan, meh, obviously I'm gonna put a Yennefer Khan in the second row, right? But I can let the Vrain Warrior to eat the Yennefer Khan directly or just uh, make it eat it later. Uh, Let's say if I let the Yennefer Khan uh, stay on the board a little bit longer, so this will be 14 strands, 14 strands, my Scorch is going to be 28. However, 9 plus 14 is what? 23? I'm only losing 5 strands. However, I, I can also get rid of this uh, Running Warrior that is at, uh, in, at the range row. right? I think this Running Warrior at the range row can potentially generate more than 5 strands. So... It's okay to just get rid of the get rid of the brain warrior at the second row rather than double scorch, okay? And that's the reason that I made that play. Okay, I could put this uh, yen right here, just so that I can uh, potentially double scorch. But he may do some interesting plays, right? He may play his K rank. He may play his uh, uh, Ikimara just to. Uh, destroy my plane, right? Okay. And then because uh, he's, uh, this Rain Warrior is gonna eat that Chrome to summon another spider, so uh, plus I don't have a very clear uh, card to play, right? Let's just get rid of that to prevent one more uh, uh, little spider from being summoning. Okay, and then this is gonna eat that. I can I can scorch that it's good enough for me right okay so the next turn I'm gonna play scorch and opponent should know that it's happening and before I play my uh, I play my Yenven he plays his spy so that's pretty uh, uh smart of him as well okay interesting so he he ate a six strength unit. Also buff up his uh Vernon Warrior to 23 strengths rather than this 20 22. Okay. Which means he value he valued the uh, the Vernon Warrior in the range row more than the Vernon Warrior down there, right? 
he knows that I have a scorch, but he's st he's still doing it. Okay, he wants to keep this, right? And then obviously, just to play around his K ran, I will have to just scorch right now. Okay. And this play also puts me ahead. And then after I use Scorch, opponent immediately Griffin and then steals my Scorch away. And which shows his deck really heavily targets the Scorch out decks, right? He has the Yennefer Calm and then he also has the Griffin, right? It's not the most uh, popular Scorch I mean not Scorch but rather monster scaling deck nowadays on the ladder. Okay. I think what I what I want to do right now is just to uh, kill the behemoth because uh, I want to deny the potential K ram play right by playing the brain right. Although I played my buff up unit right, but I can be a hut and I also uh, shut down his uh, generating uh, engine right. So I'm thinking, I think Brain is the only play that I can do right now because obviously Horsen is going to be kept until he played the Knackers, right? Uh, I don't have a really good spell to recast, especially after he just steals my Scorch. Uh, Saskia, probably not the turn to play Saskia, right? And also just to deny his... Uh, is uh, Bohemas plus he's gonna his Yennefer Khan is gonna damage all my straight strength units 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I have to prevent that from happening, right? So the only reasonable play is to play Brand and then kill the uh, Bohemoth. However, I did make a mistake, I think, because I shouldn't play this Brand in the Siege Row, rather, I should play the Brand in the, the Range Row. Because right now he can just play rain and deny all the strands on the siege row, right? If I p put this right here, uh, it's the same row that uh, he has the strongest unit, right? I, f I kind of made him play rain, so he couldn't uh, rally, but also that de denies a lot of strands of mine, of mine right? Uh, I think this is a pretty good turn to play Melva right now. Although he's gonna like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Minus 1. The Yennefer Kam is gonna do 7 damage this turn. However, I denied a lot of strengths of his uh, Rain Warrior. Right? And then lucky me, I pull back the King of Beggars. So, it's an okay play, right? Now he's Rain Warrior. It's like got denied by like almost 20 strengths. Okay. My King of Beggars right now is gonna uh, pull out either the Archers or the Dragon. Uh, both are okay. And then, holy shit, the opponent just played the <laughs> Yennefer. Which is really interesting because usually you don't play Yennefer uh, in a fashion rather than the Northern Realm, right? Because you want to... Yennefer can always summon two gold units, right? Uh, if uh, the Northern Realm player plays uh, the Yennefer, right? The Yennefer is going to be 11 strengths always because it's going to be 8 plus 3. Any other fashion is only going to get like 7 strengths. Right, so maybe... This is not the best card we played in uh, the monster. But look at the board, like, he just cleared the whole board. We played... We played like seven cards, right? About seven, eight cards, like eight cards already. And then on the board there's no unit because of that. That's insane. Okay. By pulling out either the Dragoon or the Archer, I will be able to... Uh, let the Yennefer come to uh, zap one unit at a time, right? Which is a pretty good play. The reason that I didn't pass was that... Hmm, 
Okay. I mean, at this point, I could pass, right? Because the opponent is like down one card, right? And then if I pass, the opponent play another card, and he's like uh, nine strands behind, right? He needs to play a card that has nine strands in order to win the round, which a lot of cards doesn't give nine strands. Even even it does, like he's gonna down one cards to win the round. But uh, between losing the round and uh, gain two cards advantage. Or winning the round by going even, I obviously I'm gonna choose a going even and win round one, right? So that's why I kept playing. And then opponent is 16 strengths behind, which is quite a lot, right? Although the Yennefer Calm is like. Uh, Dealing damage every single turn, but I, because I play around that, right? It's not gonna do too much damage, right? And the opponent is really smart by keeping his necker like super strong, right? And then play it. But regardless, I'm gonna banish the necker, right? It's okay to do that because I will be ahead. And right now, I'm still ahead. I'm thinking. Uh, because I do not have Scorch, but I do have Thunder, I can either Thunder the Niker or the the Varane Warrior. If I Thunder the Varane Warrior, I'm, I'm losing one strength, but I think Thundering the Varane Warrior is more important than Thundering the Niker, because he may have more Nikers in the round 2 or round 3 or even in his hand, right? Uh, Varane Warrior is a strength generating uh, unit, right? By getting that away, uh, his carryover is going to be the Niker, so... You know, it's definitely better to let him have a uh, Necker as his uh, carryover unit rather than the Rain Warrior. Okay, and I am 15 strengths ahead, minus 3, I am 12 ahead. Opponent needs to play one card that can catch up uh, by 12 strengths. Yeah. Okay, it looks like he doesn't have it, so he passes, so I, I'm gonna pass as well. Okay, pretty happy that we uh, play equal amount of cards and then I win the first round, right? Although he has a carryover uh, necker, but this necker is gonna be banished whenever it's getting consumed or just uh, goes to the third round, okay? Because it's being hit by my horse. And obviously, I win, and I'm going to use my passive fashion ability to let my opponent go first, right? My opponent plays Rally, which pulls out a uh, Rain Warrior. This is his last Rain Warrior already, right? One, two, three. He does have one more uh, Behemoth. We, but we are kind of out of cards, right? Looks like I'm just gonna rally into either the dragon or the archer. I think dragon dragon is gonna give me like nine strengths. Archer is gonna give me like eight strengths. Almost the same, but I don't want to draw dragon in the round three, right? So obviously drawing dragon in round two is gonna be better. 50-50 trends. I hit the 50 trends. I'm pretty happy about it. Okay, it looks like my opponent placed the last Behemoth as well. So he's not going to have any more Rain Warriors or the Behemoth. Okay. I am 17 strengths behind uh, by playing the Archers. Archers is 12 strengths. I will be 5 behind, right? And because he used the Rally to summon his uh, Rain Warrior, right? I shall just... Uh, Archer and then damage his behemoth to deny the carryover strength of his behemoth, right? Because uh, unless he has a Ikimara, the 13 strength uh, Rain Warrior is not going to be his carryover. Okay. So five strengths behind. Let's see what my opponent plays. And because I got to play last uh, next turn, right? Even he has a, even he has a uh, 
Grey Farm right now or later, it really doesn't matter, right? Mm, I am 16 strands behind. How many units are on the board right now? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 plus 11. Right? 6 plus 11 is 17. Looks like I will, if I play Sasuke, I will win by 1. Right? Why is it plus 11 instead of 7? Because uh, Sasuke is going to pull out Roach. And Roach is 3 strengths plus 1 is 4. Looks like my opponent made the mistake, kind of. He wants to make the Necker uh, his carryover unit. Right? I'm just making sure that I have Roach in the graveyard. He wants his Necker to be the carryover unit. So he uh, didn't want his Necker to be consumed by the Flame Warrior. Right? Had he played, uh, put the Necker right here, the Spider Mother is going to summon another uh, three strength spider, so he could win this round. Right? But by putting the Necker on the left hand side of the Rain Warrior, he didn't even get a chance. Okay? So that's the game. Alright. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.